So if you're looking to buy a piano, Steinway, Beck Stein or a high quality piano, chances are you need to have a real good look in there because you never know, it might have a new soundboard in it. And you're not going to be buying the actual Steinway or Beck Stein or whatever. So you possibly think to yourself, now why well, I don't want a piano with an, a new soundboard unless it's been, unless I can certificate it from Steinways or wherever. So how do you know if a piano's got a new soundboard in it if you're coming along to buy one? Well, the best thing to do is get on your back, look underneath and see if you can see, what you should see is the beams and you should see the soundboard underneath with the bracings and it should all be yellow, very dark yellow, very old looking basically. Um, maybe crazy paved, cracked varnish. And that's what you're really looking for. It should look older from underneath and then when you look at the top, it could have been repaired. What's what you're looking for? Is it to be repaired? If you're really lucky, there's no repairs on it. But sometimes you can really see the real clean, pristine wood on there, but it'll be pristine wood underneath as well. And you need to walk away from those unless they're asking a massively much lower price. It'll probably sound fine, but it won't sound like a normal Steinway, Blue and Betch Stein, a higher quality piano. It will have lost its original factory built, great tone and timber. It will be gone. So you really need to watch out for this. And you'll see people talking about, you can't shim, you mustn't shim us. A soundboard, it just doesn't as good as putting a new soundboard. I'm sorry, but it's better than a, a putting a new soundboard in. It's much better. Um, I've got a book here. Uh, my dad, my dad had loads of books on repair, and he taught me from. Uh, he did an apprenticeship from night. He finished an apprenticeship in 1953, and he taught me everything I know. And this book here is written by Arthur. Take a look at Arthur there. What a lovely little moustache there he's got. And there you go, quite a dapper chap. But um, in this book, it doesn't mention at all. Oh, if the soundboard's got a crack in it, replace the soundboard. It doesn't say, it's in a textbook, it doesn't say, replace the soundboard, okay? He lightly touches on what a new soundboard looks like, but it doesn't say replace the soundboard. It talks, goes into depth and talks about shimming a soundboard. You've got to shim a soundboard. You've got to repair a soundboard to keep the original tone and timber. So this is what I'm doing here. It's probably the most, the most shims I've ever put on. They're all at different heights, different depths. They're not all exactly the same. Um, when you do a shim, you've got a tool like that, and it's basically shaped the same angles as a shim. So it's a real tight fit in there for the shim. There's lots and lots of glue, and there's other little things I have to do to make sure it's a real good fit. But like I say, they're all different heights, the shims in there, because all the splits are slightly different depths. So you have to get them all, you have to know what you're doing and get them all at the right height in there and open a soundboard up. Um, and it is real, the foolproof way of doing it. And if you look after the piano with the right humidity, uh, not too dry, then those shims would be great for another half a century or more. Um, it's, this piano has blatantly been in a very overly heated environment, and that's why the soundboard shrunk, obviously shrunk and split a little bit there. And we've got the most splits I've ever done. Uh, the most average splits I do in a soundboard is probably two or three, and they often will run the, run the full length. They are only cosmetic. If you do a search online, you will just see it's a cosmetic thing. And sometimes you might get a little vibration if they've come loose from the bracings underneath, but it's quite rare. You don't, you, they, just, they just split. A soundboard is a natural thing for it to split. It is a cosmetic thing. Then it makes people feel more secure if they can't see splits, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so I've done so many of these over the years. We, I mean, I'm 52 now. My dad was in it before me. And um, this was the way they were doing it when he was taught as well, in the early part, of the middle part of the 20th century and before they were doing it then. And you know, you've put your shims in and today I'm gonna to be doing my laborious work of chiseling these down and I'm gonna uh, plane them down, sand them down. I might stain them to get them the same color so they don't stand out too much. Uh, the whole sound was gonna get stripped down, the old varnish and the old decal's gonna come off, new decal, exactly the same will go back on. So it is really hard to see sometimes whether it's a new soundboard or a restored soundboard. So you need a keen eye or you need a technician to come along. Please, please, please avoid pianos with new soundboards. They're not going to have the original intended tone and timber. I can't express that enough, okay? So that's all I've got to say about um, shimming and repairing soundboards today. I'll be back again, okay? Like if you like the video and comment if I've missed out anything, you've got any questions. Uh, feel free to uh, ask them in the comments below. Okay, cheers.